Hello, I am Reese Wallace. And I'm Luke Clancy. And this is the Cedar Log. Hello and welcome. Today we will be talking about Camp Delmont, starting in about the 1920s or so, 1918 to be exact. And we're going to be going into later on, stopping about 1929 or so. Uh, so Camp Delmont was formally dedicated in 1918 with a big show and displays of life-saving, first aid, signaling, and scout craft. Sounds like a decent celebration and fitting for the time. And in 1919, bunkhouse, the bunkhouses that uh, housed eight scouts were built across the camp at, the, at a cost of uh, 200 bucks. Uh, I don't know what that is today. It, so that is also the same year that the camp ranger Harvey Long joined. And fun fact, Harvey Long was born in 1878 in what is now Pioneer Camp at Delmont. And the lake there is named after him. Yeah, I believe it's after. Yeah, it's after him. And then his son was Perry Long, who was the Heart Ranger, which is pretty cool. What else is pretty cool, Reese? Well, I know what's pretty cool, and that's history. If you would like to join the history committee, please feel free to contact us at history at org, Or even if you just want to send us pictures, memorabilia, anything to show off the history of any of the council camps or any scouting history in general, please contact us. We would all love to see it and share it around. So who doesn't love history? Anyway, back to you, Reese. And then 1920, the rows of tents were replaced by the eight boy cabins I mentioned earlier, and they were named after famous scouts and indigenous tribes. This area, uh, they kind of called it main campus, lasted around 30 years, and it was called Camp Boone. I guess there was distinctions kind of within Delmont itself. And that name apparently never really caught on. Uh, you don't really see it referred to Camp Boone very often. And the cabins were torn down in 1957 when they were replaced by the new Camp Cedar Pool. 1920 also saw the construction of various improvements. A handicraft cabin and a daddy's cabin was built that year. The daddy's cabin was used to house the fathers of the scouts if they came to visit. And it also served as an aquatics cabin because it was by the creek. And the camp even got running water this year, with the dining hall also doubling in size. A major camp landmark, the Bridge of Smiles, was also built during this time. This bridge uh, connected the east and west parts of Delmont over the Unami Creek. Hold on, Reese. So what you're saying is that the camp at this point, after being open for some time, just got running water? That's crazy. I never... It just clicked in my head that, like, running water at this time was such an amenity to have. Like, we have it every time. I guess I'm – next time I go to camp, I'm just going to be glad we have running water. I'm not going to be sad and cold because there's no water pressure or it's a cold shower. Anyway, back to what you were saying. No, you bring up a good point, Luke. Like, people have to really remember, like, Delma was in a rural, uh, really rural part – of Montgomery County. Like there weren't paved roads really and there weren't highways. So running water is a big deal. And the like, scouts probably went swimming so often because they had no running water. You know, if you wanted to cool off, you got to jump in the Unami Creek. Don't do that today. Don't jump in that Creek today. Don't. Okay. Back to Delmont. So Delmont was used also uh, for more than just summer camp as it was used uh, each weekend from April 23rd to October 1st. By 1921, Delmont was one of the largest scout camps in the country with 100 acres and 600 scouts per season, with each of them paying seven bucks a week. And that translates to around a hundred bucks today. I mean, find me a scout camp that you can attend for a hundred bucks. That's the challenge. You're not gonna find it because it doesn't exist. That's, that's a steal. You're gonna find people spending more than hundred bucks at the trading post a week. Now exactly. And 1921 also saw the construction of more cabins along the Unami Creek, and they called it Unami Row. Uh, these cabins were 
then moved to other locations with the construction of Lake Long in 1947. And 1922 was the first time that camp hit 1,000 scouts, but it also marked uh, several camp improvements. The scouts built a new campfire area north of present-day Cedar Dining Hall, a swimming rack for the clothes the swimmers had when they, you know, ran into the, the uh, Unami Creek. Uh, they built two more bridges, and they also built a rifle range. And that is all for this week's episode of the Cedar Log. If anyone has any questions, comments, concerns about this episode or previous episodes, please please feel free to contact us at history at org. And I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask. Hey, hey, hey.